Hello chess fans, this is Rick from Chess to Impress with a video on the son of Bobby Fischer's victim. What is this about? Well, it is also number six in the series, The Night Rules. I'm going to show you three short games. They would also fit in a series I did called Opening the Buckles. Anyway, it ticks a lot of boxes for my Chess to Impress playlists. I'll explain later what the son of Bobby Fischer's victim has to do with this. Let's just go to the first game, which is between Panov and Greykov, and it was played in Moscow in the Soviet Union in 1928. I have not been able to find out if Panov, the white player, is indeed the Panov of that variation of the Karo Khan. But it doesn't really matter. Let's have a look. Panov played d4, so no Karo Khan in this game. d5, c4, c6. We have a Slav defense. Knight f3, knight f6, knight c3. D takes e4, and now a4 is the main move. And then white will want to regain the pawn on c4. But white played it differently. Panov played knight e5 instead, directly attacking that pawn. And now b5 is a possibility to try and sit on that pawn, not give it back without a fight. But black played knight bd7 and is not going to hang on to his extra pawn. Panov took, and again b5 is the main move in this position, but Grekov played e6. f3, he's planning to set up a big pawn center with e4. Bishop b4, there comes e4, and now knight takes e4. Is the knight ruling here in line with the theme of this video? Well, it doesn't rule yet, as this sacrifice is very optimistic and a bit dubious. Panov took the piece. Queen h4 check. Yes, the white king is in trouble. But is it worth a piece? King d2. And now queen f2 check is possible. And then if you interpose the bishop, then black can take on d4. And has compensation for the piece, at least practical comp compensation. After queen f2 check, he can also play king d3 to save that pawn on d4. And then black, for example, can castle. And again, has some practical compensation for the piece because of the awkward position of the white king. But in this position, Grekov did not play queen f2 check. He played queen takes e4, taking that pawn and hoping to win the d4 pawn as well. But now... White can decide the game on the spot. And if you want to look, it's not very difficult, but it's quite nice. The knight rules, it's a knight jump. Which knight jump would you play here that will cause your opponent to resign straight away? White, of course, would love to take the queen, but it cannot do that because of the pin. But knight d6 check does the trick. Very, very nice. It's a fork on king and queen, so you have to take the piece. But you take the piece with the bishop that was pinning the other knight. And now the knight on c3 can take the queen on e4. So in this position both knights rule. One sacrifices itself so that the other one can win the game. After knight d6 check, black resigned. Very nice. The knight forced king and queen sacrifices itself so that the other knight gets unpinned and takes the queen anyway. Panov against Grekov, Moscow, 1928. I found this game and the other two games I will show you in this book. Wij presenteren het paard from Hans Böhm and Jochanan Afek. The second game I will show you is a correspondence game which was played in the year 1930, long before there were engines available. The white player is Blazec and the black player is Mikulka. And Blazec opened with d4. d5, knight f3, knight c6 c4 and bishop g4 from black e3 e5 that pawn was taken and d4 here bishop e2 is a perfectly normal move and we have a normal game but white is going on an adventure with queen a4 black took on f3 g takes and bishop b4 check now if you play bishop d2 here that is the best move, but white made a mistake. Blazic played knight d2. And why is that a mistake? Well, we'll see. 
it's an opening disaster for white because black took on e3 if they take back and the queen swings over to h4 like in the previous game but now it's better for black than in that game king e2 and castling queenside from black bringing the rook into the attack f4 queen g4 check knight interposed and now the knight will rule a very nice shot knight takes e5 what a move it's a force win for black now the knight was taken and queen takes c4 check king f2 and do you see it how does black force resignation on the spot with the discovered attack bishop e1 check is check and it's attacking the unprotected queen on a4 here white resigned after king takes queen takes a4 he is a queen down for two bishops and that's not enough compensation that's how quickly things can go even if you play white this game only lasted 14 moves the third and final game is about the title of this video the son of bobby fischer's victim Bobby Fischer's victim was Mark Taimanov in 1971. He lost the candidate match in Vancouver in Canada by six points to nil. It was a great shame for the Soviet Union. Mark Taimanov lost his salary and was not allowed to travel abroad anymore. And only when Bent Larsen in the next round also lost 6-0 to Fischer were the sanctions against Taimanov somewhat alleviated. Mark Taimanov was an interesting character. He was not only an elite grandmaster of his time, but also a famous concert pianist. He played chess to get a break from the piano, and he played the piano to get a break from chess. Also, his personal life was interesting. He married four times. There is an age gap of 57 years between his children. He became a father of twins at the age of 78. And the game I'm going to show you now was played by... Igor Taimanov, the son out of his first marriage. He had the black pieces against a player called Saitlin, and it was, it was played in Leningrad, St. Petersburg, in 1981. Saitlin opened e4, and Igor Taimanov, the son of Mark, played c5. Knight f3, e6, knight c3, a6, d4. That pawn was taken, knight takes back. Develop the knight, bishop f4, and here d6 is the main move. But Igor Taimanov didn't have the same talent as his father. He played knight g to e7, and that is a bad move. Because now the knight rules. Knight db5 is the move here, and Saitlin found it. What a beautiful move, a peace sacrifice. And we'll see what the point is in a second. Taimanov took... The other knight comes to b5, and now we have all sorts of problems on the c7 square, with the king still in the middle. The engine gives a crazy variation. It wants to play queen a5 check, and says black is okay. After bishop d2, attacking the queen, queen drops back, and then knight d6 check. Looks very strong. King d8, and then you have this fork on f7. You're going to lose the rook. How can this be okay for black? King e8. Knight takes in the corner. Then the queen can take on b2. And after rook b1, the queen goes back to f6. The variation continues. I give you the engine variation. Queen h5 check. g6 interposing, hitting the queen. And then queen takes h7. And rook takes a2. Let's leave the variation here. The engine says this is playable for black as this knight on h8 will not get out and will be lost, and then black has enough compensation for the rook. A crazy variation, impossible to calculate for a human being. Igor Taimanov did not play queen a5 check, he played d5, but had to resign after bishop c7, because queen d7 is the only move, and then knight d6 check, the king has no squares, so you have to sacrifice the queen. And black has two knights for the queen, but that is not nearly enough compensation. Igor Taimanov threw in the towel after bishop c7. His father must not have been very pleased with this loss. 
in only nine moves. And what about our game? Rick against a chest to impress viewers. Let's put the position on the board. Let's go through the moves. I played on my ninth move, h2, h3. And now it is your turn. So this game will take longer than the game of Igor Taimanov because we are already on move nine. And if you haven't voted yet, then please put your move, your ninth move that you would play in this position in the comments underneath this video. And then you will be in the raffle. I will raffle a chess book at the end of the game. And if you take part, you only have to take part once, but of course I hope you will take part for the full game. Then you will be in the raffle to win that chess book. Every Sunday we make a move as part of the viewers game series. I hope you will take part in our game. And I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe to the Chess to Impress channel and please leave a comment. I will read them all and I will reply to them all. If you liked the video, it would be great if you could share it on social media by clicking the share button on YouTube. You can find me on Instagram, on Twitter and also on Facebook. Next Tuesday, we're going to look at the pawn, the pawn will rule. Thank you for watching.